if you want to find yourself if you don't want to find yourself sorry in the wrong congregation now our central topic remains bible pattern for living as a christian don't forget bible pattern for living as a christian is our topic but what we are treating today is unifying factors that you should pay attention to if you don't want to find yourself in the wrong congregation slash so that you will not be condemning your same faith brother or sister now when i talk about unifying factors i'm talking about you know we have so many churches now we have so many religions now there are the christians are there jehovah witnesses are there the muslims are there uh, different kind of religion now what i want us to look at as christians today is i want to empower you, you with truth now so that you can know what we call same faith brethren am i communicating now what does the bible says about all this religion now who do you know is how can you know somebody that is serving god like you are you getting what i'm saying that's what i want us to look at now we all may not attend the same church can i even tell you the truth there is no name of any church in heaven we all may not attend the same church the deeper lives that are redeemed christian church of god new covenant god's power cac but let's look at how do we know the true church how do we know who is a christian brother who is okay can i say how do we know the person that we are serving the same god am i communicating now so that for i'm saying this for two reasons number one so that you will not be deceived and number two so that you will not be fighting your fellow brother in christ in the name of we don't attend the same denomination are you getting what i'm saying you know if you look at what is happening in africa you see that we are so denominational minded in africa to the point that even when some people are not yet born again they won't go to another church they will tell you i was born in so so and so church now they didn't encounter god there instead of them to go to a place where they can encounter god and their life become better i said no 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 in fact i have seen situations where a lot of people don't believe that apart from their church that every other church is a church of jesus you know some people have that mindset no it's only our church it's only our church we've had issues like that even in our church that we have tried to settle some we succeeded some was not successful i've had cases of uh, some brothers in our church got married to sisters from uh, winners chapel in fact when we released one of our brothers he was going for counseling you no know, marriage counseling at the winners chapel in lagos they said sister bring your husband so they, they, they arranged about four sundays so he gave he took my permission and i said go ahead even we ourselves too if somebody will get married you will do counseling you know what the pastor was telling the brother that after your marriage you and your wife must join win winners so when the brother told me i said tell that pastor that that's not what bishop Oedipo taught them the church of jesus is one do you know that after their wedding the sister insisted no we can't go to the same church if you see, see that you come and join me at winners but for me to come and join you in church no so i want us to begin to understand certain things you will meet people but let us understand what we call unifying factors what are the things that brings us together that will make us understand that we serve the same god can we start with a uh, look at this first example in luke chapter 9 something happened in the days when jesus our lord was on earth luke chapter 9 48 to verse 50. it was from this statement i discovered that we can be of different denomination yet serving the same god luke chapter 9 48 to verse 50. i want us all to see it luke chapter 9 from verse 48 to verse 50. can we have it on screen let's read together after the count of three one two three and let's go and said to them whoever receives this little child in my name i'm the only one reading receive me and whoever received me receive him who sent me for he who is least among you all will be great now look at 49 that's where i'm going let's read together one two and let's go now john answered and said master 
we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we forbade him because he does not follow us wait now, I don't know whether this scripture makes sense to you they came to give Jesus a report sir when we went out for evangelism we met one man he was casting out demons in your name but he's not one of the member of this, this assembly and when we saw him using your name we that are close to you have to tell him come on stop what you are doing stop what you are doing and look at the response of Jesus our Lord next verse verse 50 let's read together one two let's go but Jesus said to him do not forbid him for he who is not against us is on our side can you see the man was a pastor we didn't know when he gave his life to Christ though he gave his life to Christ. He had an encounter with Jesus, but he didn't follow that group. He started his own ministry. And he was preaching the name of Jesus and casting out demons in the name of Jesus. So disciples got offended. Ah, ah, ah. Why can you be using the name of our pastor and uh, you are not in our fellowship? And Jesus said, don't forbid him. Don't stop him. Because as long as he's not against us, he's on our side so i want to use this one to establish this truth to you that see there is no name of any church in heaven now everybody cannot be a member of god's evangelical mission now everybody cannot be a member of deeper life bible church everybody cannot be a member of redeemed christian church of god everybody cannot be a member of new covenant everybody cannot be a member of victory international church now we serve a god of what varieties that's why he is up to now he's still calling servants of God to start churches why calling us in different areas now look at this uh, uh, like a mountain of fire now the man of God is called to preach deliverance now from the angle of prayer that's why he's winning souls now if you look at uh, Bishop David Odeko, from the angle of prosperity that's why he's winning souls now, if you look at uh, 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 the deeper life pastor, was pa Pastor W.F. Kumui, from the angle of, of what? Holiness. That's where he's winning souls. If I was listening to one of his messages today. From the angle of holiness, that's where he's winning souls. Now, if you listen to Bishop Tawadilakun, from the angle of victory, that's where he's winning souls. God calls us, giving us different kind of message, but the same focus. So I hear but how can you know the right congregation? How can you know those serving God with us? Because you have to take note of this so that you will not be, will not be fighting ourselves. Now, there are certain beliefs that unifies us. Hello? Now, anyone that does not follow this belief is not serving the God that you and I are serving. So I brought five today. Let's look at the first one. John chapter 14 and verse 6. Look at John chapter 14 and verse 6. Now, the first unifying factor that shows that we serve the same God. John chapter 14, verse 6. Look at this. Jesus said to him, clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Follow this reading. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, which means, with this statement, Jesus Christ is establishing the truth that, see, any religion that says, that refuses to accept Jesus Christ as their only access to God, he said it clearly, no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, go see any Ken, you know, go see any, you know, you know, you know, you know, can you see? No one. Now, that's the first thing that shows the person that you can call your same faith Christian brother I wrote here Jesus is our only access to God as said by Jesus himself in this verse whoever will not accept Jesus as the only way to the living God does not serve the same God as you now, if you ask the Muslims, what is the, what is the difference we have? They don't want to accept that Jesus is the only way. So we are not serving the same God. Now, people can say it politically, and we are serving the same God. But it is clear, Jesus said it here. No one, no one. 
So which means, whoever does not accept Jesus as the only way, access to God, does not serve the God that you are serving. I'm showing you unifying factors. I don't want you to be deceived. Because some Christians are already, gradually, their minds are already shifting. And, imagine I was listening to a program on radio. A herbalist was mentioning and was telling somebody that Onumila is greater than Jesus. That Onumila is the first uh, uh, servant of, that God sent. I didn't want to turn off because I love knowledge. I love reading. I love listening to information. But my, I couldn't gain access to call. I wanted to call. Because with, with gradual philosophies, you know, all these philosophies, they will paint it so well. Some Christians are already backsliding, you know, I'm telling you. Some Christians are already saying, uh, 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 it's not only through Jesus Christ that you can make heaven now. But Jesus said it point blank, categorically. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one. Now, let's look at other scriptures. Let's look at other scriptures. First John chapter 4, 1 to 4. And first John chapter 2, 21 to 24. First John chapter 4, 1 to 4. Now look at this. And in that day, no, no, this is Isaiah. First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1, chapter 4, sorry. First John chapter 4, not Isaiah 4. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits, whether they are of God. Look at this. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you will know the spirit of God. Every spirit that does what? That confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Any spirit that does not agree that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Now look up. It says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Let's look at the second one too. Then I continue to explain. First John chapter 2, 21 to 24. 1 John 2, 21 to 24. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Move on. Who is a liar? But he who denies who? I didn't hear you. That Jesus is the Christ. He's an antichrist. Who denies the Father? And the son, who is he? He's an antichrist. He who denies that Jesus Christ is, we stop at 24. Whoever denies the son does not have the father either. He who acknowledges the son has the father also. 24. Therefore, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the son and in the father. So, can you see that? That's why, even up to now, the other religion will, will never accept that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Money alone will be more present to be. But this is, how do you know people to relate with? Anywhere where it is preached that Jesus Christ is the only way to God. That's a true church. Now, irrespective of their doctrine, Next week, I may talk to you about the issue of doctrine. Don't look at eh, one low hearing, one low hearing, eh, one shikiri, one. No, those ones are church doctrines. I'll talk more on that next week. Praise the Lord. So, no matter their number, if they deny that Jesus is the only access to God, they don't serve our God. Please reduce this a bit. No matter their number, if they deny that Jesus Christ is the only access to God, they don't serve the God me and you are serving. Please take note of all these truths. They are the factors that unifies us as true church. Number two, I will tell you five. Now, Jesus also says something in John chapter 3 verse 3. 
Look at John chapter 3 and verse 3. I know you can quote it, quote it offhand. John chapter 3 and verse 3. Very simple scripture. But it's the truth. Now, and what did he say? Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Wait. So, what makes the churches to be united? Listen, the preaching on being born again is another thing that unifies us. You know, some people preach that, oh, God, I, I have known God right from the womb. You have not known God from the womb, oh. I know of churches who say, a pastor was saying, God has called me ever before I was born. Now, if you don't answer the salvation call, you cannot answer assignment call. So, Jesus said it categorically, uh, categorically, except a person accepts God's salvation plan by being born again, he cannot see the kingdom. No matter how they paint it in self-righteousness, we don't serve the same God. Hello, am I communicating? Listen, he or she will not be able to see the kingdom of God not to talk of entering it if he or she has not given his life to Christ. He has not become born again. Now, and I want to also show you something. Now, that word, those words, born again, what does it mean? Because if you ask some, are you born again? Some will say no. Some, are you born again? You say yes. What does it mean to be born again? That's another thing that unifies us together. Now, it's divided into, look at it, into four groups. Number one, being born again, uh, born again, begins with what we call acceptance now what do you accept to welcome jesus christ into your life as your ruler and director now that's the first thing that is when you say being born again the first thing is acceptance have you accepted jesus christ as your lord now, under it, number two, is repentance. After you are ready to accept Jesus, the next thing is, are you ready to turn away from everything that is sinful? Now, if you say you accept Jesus and you are not turning from sin, you are not born again. You are the type that will steal. Uh, steal. You are the type that will commit fornication and you are born again. Mm, no, it starts with acceptance. It moves further to what? To what's number two? To Repentance. You think and you decide and I'm going to change my character based on the encounter I have had. Then it went for that. Number three, it goes to submission. Now under submission, that's where we have water baptism, we have Holy Ghost baptism. That's submission. Then the last one under it is what we call devotion. Now, this devotion is a commitment to walk and grow in the knowledge of God. That is, you make up your mind that I will walk and I will grow in the knowledge of God. Any church where they don't teach this, hear me, that is not a true church. Let's understand our unified factors. Are you born again? Praise the Lord. And then here, praise the Lord. Now, number three. The third one. We are looking at unifying factors. Now, this the next one is in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews 12, 14. Let's look at it. Hebrews chapter 12. And verse 14. How do we know that we are serving the same God? They must talk about holiness now. Be what me more. He said, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Can you see? Without which no one will see the Lord. Without which no one will see the Lord. Without which no one will see the Lord. That's the teaching on holiness. This is when Holiness is when you determine not to follow the way of sin. A commitment to living right. How do we know the right church? How do we know the, 
they are those that are we are of the, we are serving the same God. They will have understanding of this. You know, there are churches coming up now. Stop that! Stop that! Stop that! Stop that! There are churches coming up now, and they will be telling you what we call eternal grace. If I had one pastor preaching it online, he said the sin you committed yesterday, Jesus has paid for it. The sin you are committing now, Jesus has paid for it. The sin you will commit tomorrow, Jesus has paid for it. You don't need to do anything. He does not need your works. All you just need to do, accept the righteousness that Jesus has given to you. So, which means you can continue to live as a fornicator, Jesus has given you righteousness. Oh, you can continue to, to live as a liar, Jesus has given you righteousness. This is the error going out now. That's the error in town now. And if I tell you, that's one thing that even the youths like to hear. They will preach it and tell them, give a yay to the Lord. Yay! I want to show you two scriptures to show you that righteous holiness is not a gift. Salvation is a gift. Jesus paid for you to be saved. Now, the moment you accept salvation, you need to work it out. Maintenance requires that you work it. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 7 from verse 1. Then we'll later read Romans chapter 6, 15 to 23. Or can we start with that of Romans? Romans chapter 6 from verse 15 to verse 23. Romans chapter 6 from verse 15 to verse 23. Now look at this. It says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Question. And what was the answer? Certainly not. Are we going to say because we are no longer under us? Do we now say because we are under grace now we can now come, we can live as we like? The scripture answers no. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness now let's move on but God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin yet you obeyed that shows responsibility from the heart that that form of doctrine to which you were delivered move on and having been set free from sin, you became slaves. You, you became slaves of what? Of righteousness. Verse 19. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves to uncleanliness, look at another commitment again, and of uh, lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness. So now, what do you do? So now, present your members as slaves of what? Righteousness. For he didn't say, okay, now the way you were living in sin before, don't worry now, you now have righteousness. He said, present. It shows that it involves you. Let, let's read on. For when we were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. End of every sin is death. But now, having been set free from sin, and having becoming slaves of God, you have your fruits to holiness and the end everlasting life. Let's move on. For the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. For the wages of sin is death. So it shows us that one of the things that should unify us as Christians is that in the true church, the teachings of holiness is real. Now, if you say you are a member of the body of Christ, you must make up your mind that you will live a holy life. I was, I, I went to preach on radio. And by the time I returned, I don't know the brother, he took my phone, my, my number, and started chatting me when I got home. He said, are you Pastor Prince? I said, yes, I'm Pastor Prince. He said, I listened to a program on radio and I was blessed. He said, but sir, I have this grace I could pray for 10 hours non-stop. That's a peculiar grace. 10 hours non-stop. That he could pray for 10 hours non-stop. Peculiar grace, Neil. He said, but sir, I have this problem. I said, what is it? He said, I masturbate. 
He said, and I've been battling with this masturbation for the past seven years. I've tried to stop. I've not been able to stop. Sir, please pray for me. And instantly, as I was responded, responding to him, sorry, the first thing I said is that you don't need prayer. I said there are about six steps that I will share with you. And I said the first thing is this. You must understand that the only thing that activates grace eh, is determination. That the first thing is you must make up your mind. You don't want to do this thing again. If you don't make up your mind, grace to stop doing it will not come. It's the same thing as holiness. If you don't make up your mind that you will serve God, you can't serve God. If you don't make up your mind that you will stop lying, you can't stop lying. Because there's one thing the devil is always looking for with sin. And what's that thing? Addiction. That's one thing the devil is always looking for. He wants you to be addicted to it. So, and when you become addicted, you begin to struggle. So, I said, after number one, I said, then number two, bro, I said, you have to now block the source because you can't masturbate without a thought. Hello? Now, which means there's, there are thoughts in his mind, things that feed his mind with wrong thoughts that makes him to think of, I need to masturbate. Now, block every source that brings wrong thoughts to your mind. Phonographic movies, pornographic pictures. He was shocked. He was responding as if he has never had it. I said, the number three, you now need to now renew that mind with the word. You know, there is a thinking that is making you behave like that. So if you are going to change your behavior, you must start by what? Changing the way you think. Because in this body we have, we have a stock in our mind. That's why the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, what happens to the mouth? The mouth speaks. So by the time I gave him those things, his eyes opened and he was very thankful. The same thing, every Christian should understand that, listen, holiness is a must. Any church where they are preaching, ah, no, you cannot be holy. Hey, that's not the truth. We, we are not serving the same God. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Look at this one. It says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us what? Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in we are in the fear of God. So that's number three. Let's look at number four. The fourth unifying factor. How do you know that we serve the same God? The Bible is God's standard for living. Any assembly where they don't see the Bible as God's standard, run away. We are not serving the same God. Any assembly where the Bible is not the standard, we are not serving the same God. How do I know this? 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. The Bible is God's standard for living. Any assembly where the word of God is not seen as the standard of God, please, that's not, it shows us that we are not serving the same God. I read, it says, all scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God. And is profitable for all these things. Number one, for doctrine. Number two, for reproof. Number three, for correction. Number four, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Which means God's word is the instrument to equip us. What is the instrument to equip us? The word. So how do you know a church where Jesus dwells, the people serving the same God that we serve? The word of God must be the ultimate. Not that you go to a church, they will sing, they will dance, they will lead prayer, and they will not be preaching. You know there are churches like that. They will dance, they will lead prayer, but not nobody will open the Bible for, for one minute. So God's word is God's standard. And the last one, 
I'm speaking on today before we go to the communion in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 52 to 58 the belief that there is life after death unifies us there's rapture the belief that there is life after death you know there are some religion they believe that once you are dead that's the end I was, I was listening to a documentary I'm coming to that scripture a, a documentary it's a tribe in uh, Malawi when people die the people will gather together they will take the dead body they will remove all his skin they will remove all his skin they will cook the, the, the meat all of them in the whole town they will eat it he said it's, they are still in Malawi till this morning. They will now take the bone of the person to the forest. They will dry it for seven days. After seven days, they will grind it. They will now use to cook pepper soup. All of them will drink. Now, they said they believe that once they drink that pepper soup, the spirit of that person has come into all of them. So that person did not die. His spirit is inside them. <laughs> And you know all these philosophies, the way they will present it. If you are not careful, we will go and carry the way. Do you know that so many Christians don't believe Jesus is coming back again? Hey, they have been telling us on someone that is coming. Let's read what the scripture says. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Chapter 15, verse 52 to 58. In a moment, look at this. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. And the dead will be raised incorruptible. Now look at how it will take place. This is how the standard of God. When the trumpet sounds, those who have been dead, eh, that have been buried, the Bible says they will be the first to rise. Now look at that. We are mine. No? We rise incorruptible, and we that are still alive. That's if we are still alive when the trumpet will sound. The Bible says, What will happen to us? We shall be changed. Whether you use earring, you don't use earring. This your physical body is not going to heaven. Whether you wear trousers or you wear skirt. No matter how. Whether you bleach your skin or you leave it to be black. By the time the trumpet sounds, the Bible says, what will happen? We shall be changed. Changed to what? For this corruptible must be put, sorry, for this corruptible must put on what? Incorruptible. That's what we call incorruptible body. And this mortal must put on immortality. That's why I used to say, man is a spirit, he lives in the flesh, he has a soul. Now let's move on. But this incorruptible must put on uh, incorruption. Yes. Now, so when the corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 25. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, ages, where is your victory? Now, can you see? We stop at 58. 58. The sting, sorry. The sting of death is sin, and the sting of sin is the law. 57. 57. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So there is life for us after death. Everything will not end here. At times when we are talking about rapture at home, our children will say, uh, 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 Daddy, uh, Jesus should not come now. Uh, I want to enjoy life. When I enjoy life, after I got married, I begin to enjoy I walk, I'm walking, I buy car. I, I, Jesus will come. I say, see, we said that too when we were young. But now that we have grown up, we have seen that all those things does not make sense. And I keep telling them, they say, place better. A place where you don't need to sweat. You don't need AC. A place where the weather is... If I remember the time God gave me an encounter about that of heaven. I shared it during uh, uh, Mommy Aloba's uh, burial. The first time I saw heaven, I was praying that time, Lord, if heaven is real, I want to know. So I slept. And I saw my body. You know, my body came out of my spirit. I mean, my spirit came out of my body. 
and as I was going I saw a very tall man very long hair but he had wings he stood like this he looked like a woman but he has the future of a man features of a man and he said I want to show you your mansion in heaven so he said I'm standing he now told me he said I'm this was how he said he said I'm standing in front of your mansion in heaven this is it so I look at it that time I'm talking about over something it was twin bungalow ah I was happy I now said to him please let me in he said no you cannot come in now so he said go back as I turned back something said you have opportunity to enter heaven now and you are saying you want to go back so I turned I wanted to drag with him he just pushed me as he pushed me I woke up I closed my eye again to sleep I didn't see anything then in 2014 I was praying I said Lord I have seen heaven about two three times I have seen rapture about two three times Lord if hell is real show me I pray that God will give you this encounter too so I slept do you know what I saw this time I saw my spirit my spirit come out of my body and as it was going a tall man just came and he stood in front of me like this he said I am instructed to show you her he said let's go as we were going I didn't see any fire I saw desert very wide it does not have end I now saw different kind of holes 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 I want to go to now as we were getting closer I was hearing people screaming ah ah they were screaming you know when somebody is screaming in terrible pain I now told him please I don't want to go again he said I'm instructed to take you there you know, that fear, the terror was in my mind. So, as we're going, as we got to the first hole, he just took me by hand. As we're entering, this dragon, I've seen them in movies. A dragon was just flying towards my direction. And that same man said, I have an instruction that you should not touch him. You know, in heaven, it's like they, they flow with commands. I have an instruction that you should not touch him. Then as we got that to that, I didn't see any fire. I heard somebody screaming like the person was screaming in pain. I now said, please, I don't want to go again. I don't want to go again. Please, I don't want to go again. Take me back. The man now said, now that you have seen that hell is real, go back and tell them. I will come. So, one of the things that unify us here in, in that will make you know that we have we serve the same God is that they must believe in these things. Number one, they must believe in the rapture, that's the trumpet sound. Two, they must believe in the second coming. Now, the second coming of Christ is when the new Jerusalem will come down to the earth. Three, they must believe in judgment. You know, the Catholics believe in purgatory. They will tell you that there's a place sinners go to. They will suffer for some time. After some time, he will now release them. No, judgment is everlasting. So if we serve the same God, we must believe in judgment. Three, they must believe in eternal life. I wrote here, check out this. They are unifying factors to identify through churches of Jesus. Any church where they will tell you that, come on, there is no hell. There is no heaven. It's not the church of Jesus. You don't serve the same. Any church they tell you that ah, no, there's nothing like rapture. There's no rapture. We don't serve the same God. All these things are real. Apart from that, I've read them in the scriptures, I've seen them myself. Now listen, any church where you now find these five unifying factors, we serve the same God, irrespective of their doctrine. Are you hearing me? Now, don't because of the name of any church take any Christian as your enemy. There is no name of any church in heaven. The reason why people receive names is just to identify 
their vision, the vision the man of God have received. He received a vision and he looked at, okay, these are the sets of kind of people I am called to raise, to attract. Do you know that as, now look up, we have food, we have food cook, we have shop right. Abi, uh, what's the name of that new one that just came out to be early now? Ace, Ace Mall. Now, do you know that some people will never eat in food court? They prefer shop right. Some will never eat in shop right. They prefer food court. Some will never go to Ace Mall. They prefer. Shop. Are you know what I'm saying? Now, that's how church is. When God calls people, He allows you to gather the peculiar people that believes in your vision. So it does not mean that if you are not in deeper life, you will not make heaven. Ah, if you are not in God's power, you will not make heaven. That was the kind of thought that Elijah was nothing. He said, Lord, everybody have backslidden. I'm the only one left. Everybody have backslidden. They are forsaking you. God smiled. He was shocked when God said, do you know that there are 7,000 people in this land that has not bowed their knees to Baal? I believe Elijah will be surprised. Eh? 7,000. And I didn't know them. You know what God meant? God meant they don't look like you. You may not know them by dressing. You may not know them by their language. But I, God, I know them. May the Lord uphold us. I said, may the Lord God uphold us. So let's understand what unifies us. Let's stop fighting unnecessary fights. In fact, Paul had to rebuild the church of Corinth. He said, some of you are saying, I am of Apollos. Some of you are saying, I'm of Paul. Paul said, who is Paul? Who is Apollos? He said, we are, we are just vessels. Who unifies us together? Christ Jesus. That's why we must not allow denomination to tear us apart. You know one of the things that is making churches in Africa not to be strong is this denominational mentality. Why is it that these terrorists are stronger than us? Or you have not heard, maybe you have not heard, the people of the other religion, they, are, they have established their bank. And in their bank, they give loans free interest free loan yes one of them said they want to establish a university where people of their everybody will come free now why are we not making that much impact because of the denominational mind God's power will say I won't go to deeper life school deeper life will say I won't go to a new covenant but let's put all those mindsets aside. Let's begin to see ourselves as one. As one. I will tell you more on doctrines next week. Hallelujah. We take his flesh and blood every Wednesday. Jesus our Lord said we should always do this in remembrance of him. Father,